So today we are officially starting our 10,000 kilometer road trip yeah. from the east coast of Canada all the way up to Alaska. And we're here with our camper van, Vinny, who you, if you've watched our videos before, you know. And the past few days actually we explored Nova Scotia already a little bit. Uh, we drove around Cape Breton. On our first proper day of van life, we see a mom moose and her two babies. And then made it here to New Brunswick where we're starting our, let's say, road trip across Canada. The rest of it was basically just a really beautiful detour. <laughs> yeah, it was like a beautiful detour. We're starting our road trip now from New Brunswick and we're going to hopefully end up in Quebec, Quebec City. We only have about a little bit more than three weeks to complete that route and to get to Alaska. We'll tell you more about why that is in a little bit, but it's going to be a really, really crazy three weeks. Should we get uh, cracking? But first, there's a bunch of stuff that we still need to sort out before we can actually move this vehicle. To oh yeah, like we need gas We need to do a few, a few practical things and then we're gonna hit the road and go to Quebec. One of the most important things when living in a van is managing your waste actually, because well, it's not like at home you have like a waste bin where you put in stuff and they come and collect it or... Wait. Do not leave me hanging, brother, come on. Or you don't have a sewer system where if you go to the toilet, it just disappears. No, no, it stays in our van. We just keep it with us. Luckily, we found a, a gas station that has an RV dump site right here next to us, which comes really, really handy because like at some point it just is full, you know, and... and hey, or... please, just dump it, do it. Unscrew this cap, do like this. Oh. So weird, doesn't seem to fit. This is not possible. But it is diesel, look. It says diesel. How weird is this because we already had some diesel here. I mean, we spilled a little bit on the floor even. But it's like, this connection is a bit different. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Ever since we picked up the van, we actually haven't found a spot or an opportunity to refill our big water tank yet. And all the water we've been using to do dishes and stuff basically was store-bought, like this. But at this gas station, if you have an RV or a van like us, you can get free tap water just right here outside. What have you been beavering around? Just in case. In the shower. In the shower. Bye, Petro Canada. Thank Thanks you. for water and no gas. <laughs> so there's diesel available here, so let's get some diesel, folks. Yep, this one fits. So weird that the one from Petro Canada doesn't fit. And we are off full water tank, empty toilet, full tank of diesel. So we have a long drive ahead of us uh, today and tomorrow. And first, our first stop will be New Brunswick here. We're going to the Bay of Fundy. Bay of Fundy, it has fun in the name, so it should be good now. Alrighty folks, getting to our first stop, eh? So when you drive from Nova Scotia to New Brunswick and then you continue on the way down to St. John's, you're gonna come through what is called the Bay of Fundy, which is this massive bay that's pretty famous actually for something really special. It is the bay, the place with the highest tidal difference between low and high tide. It's about 10 meters or 30 feet and in some cases it even gets up to 13, 14 meters. So in six hours time the water drops about 12 to 10 meters. It's crazy because this whole bay you see behind us, because now it's high tide, which is arguably not the best time to visit, better to visit at low tide, but it was at 6 a.m. this morning, which we didn't make for obvious reasons. But anyway, now it's high tide, so you can see this. Uh, but when you come back in six hours time, 
the water will be 10 meters lower and you can actually walk across the ocean floor here in the bay we'll uh, insert some footage here that we will probably find on the internet somewhere so you can see what it looks like when it's completely empty we didn't time it very well did we yeah it's crazy there's to see a small this. little beach here yeah and here you can see all of the pinnacles so we waited around half an hour and now they opened up actually where you can already walk a little bit here you can see over there at the red marks over there that it was approximately this height so it was about two meters height here and it's already dropped significantly it's still a beautiful bay though and all these beautiful trees canada the nature here is just incredible makes for a nice stop along the way um, driving to quebec there's uh, one thing that the east coast especially new brunswick here is known for in canada it is lobster they have these human sized lobsters here they only <laughs> grow here in the world so uh one feisty fella Here they have the little fellas, these ones are cooked, look really delicious. And these ones are the live ones, so you can you can buy them live and uh, boil them yourself if you want. Oh, that, have you seen that? Look at this massive thing, don't touch it. It is, I think, 15 pounds. Oh, that I've never one. seen such a big one. Whoa. It only has one though, but it's big enough for two, so. I've never seen such a big lobster. So if you go for around $260? Yeah. 260 for that one. Yeah. Wow. Oh, thank you. Wow, thank you. <laughs> How good does this look? The lobster roll. We've got a bunch of lobster meat here. Some sauce. No veggies, just lobster. A little bit of uh, lemon. It's actually the first time I've had lobster this way because we, sometimes we eat lobster at home where it's like a whole lobster and then you get like just a lobster. Here's between the sandwich. I think it's really nice as well, but I still prefer like just eating the lobster because then you get more of like the true lobster flavor. And then what's that down there? Down here it's pepper. It's good though. It's really good. Wow. This is like one of the famous places here. In New Brunswick to have lobster. Alma Lobster Shop. Come here. Good reviews. Big lobsters. Good rolls. <laughs> and then this is fish and chips because while we're on the coast, I wanted to try that as well. This is actually a huge portion. You can share this if you want. Yes, please. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. That batter is really, really nice and crispy. And the fish is still like nice and moist. It's nice. So when we said earlier that we're a little bit strapped for time here in Canada, the reason behind that is because I realize it might sound weird to some people because traveling is what we do. You would think we have all the time in the world on pretty much every trip we take. Um, but because this part, like crossing Canada to get to Alaska, is only the beginning of our Pan American journey, we're actually also looking at a few time constraints on a bigger level. So since we want to drive to Pan American and cross North America, Central America, South America, we also have to take into account the weather in the different, let's say, weather regions or whatever. The hurricane season in Central America is from September through November and that brings with it so much rain in large parts of Central America. If we don't get them... Sometimes it's like even floods or roads completely like wash away so you can't pass so it's not just a term of like weather for our enjoyment but it's also just like really in terms of safety, safety and, and feasibility of being yeah. able to actually complete the trip. So normally we would have loved to start the trip a little bit earlier, about a month earlier, but because of our US visa situation, having to ship the van, waiting to get it back, etc. We now have to like, we have to cruise through this first bit at a really solid pace if we want to have our van survive Central America. So we're just gonna try to see as many beautiful spots in Canada as we can and not stress too much about seeing everything because that's just not possible. But we're definitely gonna see the highlights um, and we're just gonna take what we can get. I think it's gonna be awesome.
Who knows? Who knows? Maybe it might be awesome. Something we also need to be a bit mindful of is like, like Kim sometimes wants to rush a bit too much. He's like, no, no, we have to get there in time. We have to get there. We have to get there. And there's like a plan, or I have, there's not even a plan. It's like a plan in our head of what timing we should do, and it, it changes a bit throughout the day, throughout the week. So depending on how stressed she is. So, and I'm a bit more like, yeah, let's go with the flow. Let's see, we can always adjust that, which is also not like the best way. I mean, there's no best way. The middle road yeah. between those two is probably the best. That's also usually where we end up, but sometimes it's only after a little bit of a discussion that we manage to end up there. Or a fight. Or a fight. Nah, we never fight. We don't fight. We don't show that to you guys, so it doesn't happen, right? No, we do. So this is the Funny Parkway Trail. This is an absolute gorgeous corner of Canada. Because these are really like the pine forest, beautifully lush and green, the way you would expect to see them. And like every time I look outside, I can't believe it. We're driving our van in Canada. And like we haven't even gotten to the highlights of Canada yet. We haven't even gotten to the middle part, the Rockies with the mountains and the, the van from British Columbia and oh. It's amazing. I already love it so much. What a beautiful country. The Fundy trailer begins here, but apparently it closes at five every day. I thought you could just go through and then you could just drive through it and the park or somewhere would close, but apparently uh, no, it closes at five, so it sucks a little bit. And now I'm not sure which way to go because I don't have an internet connection. This Looks like a dodgy road. Let me just pull over. Because it doesn't even look like we're gonna be able to fit through that bit there with the van. I'm always optimistic. The fastest way is actually backtrack a few kilometers and then drive that way. Let's do that. Let's be sensible. Let's be smart about this, folks. Let's not do what Nike would do. I'm just gonna turn around there somewhere before we get stuck. We switched drivers for a little bit because I was getting tired and a little bit hungry. It's time for someone to do the real good driving. But yeah, the landscapes along the way, absolutely beautiful. This is really exceeding our expectations, no? Canada so far, amazing, just amazing. Bought some hummus. Oh, okay, okay, what's going on? We bought some hummus, we bought some wraps. We're gonna snack along here a little bit along the way. Wrap. All I need is a nice cold beer. It looks like we killed off at least half of the population of uh, mosquitoes in New Brunswick. It might even be more, like look at them, there's blood on the windshield and we only drove a few hundred kilometers so far. There are so many mosquitoes in Canada, it is insane. Alright, we can hardly see anything anymore because of all the dead bodies. It's time for some drastic measures, folks. Making it worse. I mean, it's just a few more kilometers. Technically, we can still see plenty to drive. It's not ideal, but yeah. Right, guys, so we have arrived at our spot. We're gonna show you where it's at in the morning um, because we are super, super, super close to the river and right next to that is the border with the US. Perfect, we're good, yeah.
Wait, there's more. Tim in a cup. Just gonna take off the window covers here so we can uh, have a look outside here. And at spy the on the US. <laughs> spy on the US. That's what are you up to this morning, you devious Americans? Hey lady, have you seen my slippers? Out here. You can see all the beautiful little flowers that I'm stepping on. And right over there is the St. John's River. And over there we have US America. So that bridge crosses the river and then you can get to America. There's Canadian border services there and I guess US border services on the other side. Game is editing some videos and I'm doing some translation work and yeah, so next few hours. Worky worky! Nothing but fun, fun work. <laughs> the office is pretty great though. It's time to pack up our stuff and uh, get going to Quebec City. Um, unfortunately, I just got some bad news. My great aunt has passed away. She was uh, 96 years old, I believe, or she would turn 96 this year. Um, up until like a month, two months ago, she was in pretty good health, actually. Um, but the last few weeks, her health started declining. Nothing like a super specific illness, I guess, but yeah, she she passed away like a few hours ago and my mom just called me. But yeah, yeah, that's that's one of the things when you're traveling full time, it's it's not always possible to be there for like these important family matters or events or stuff like that. And yeah, it sucks. It sucks and I'm a little bit sad and also slightly relieved because like her health was not the best anymore and, and the last few weeks she was like not in a great state and she ramble ramble delete that Kim Kim So we have now entered Quebec City, uh, no, Quebec, Quebec the province. The, the <laughs> province of Quebec, not the city. Um, we're about two hours out from the city, we think. Um, there's an hour time difference here as well, because Canada is just that massive that it has several time zones, which the Belgians is like unimaginable. <laughs> like, I think it has four or five time zones. Maybe yeah. it's six, I'm not sure. Like it's a lot, it's a lot, a lot. So uh, yeah, quite a lot. Mucho. But we're gonna make it to uh, Quebec City, hopefully before it gets dark, because it's always a bit safer. And then tomorrow... We're gonna explore Quebec City. You know what's also gonna be a lot? The amount of gas it's gonna cost to drive up to Alaska. Like, every time you think about that, we're like... Yeah, should've thought this through. <laughs> All right, after parking up the van, slightly dodgy place with a little bit too much graffiti, we are now entering the city of Quebec, which is uh, the only, here's the city walls, it's the only fortified city in North America, uh, outside of Mexico, there's a few in Mexico, but like in US and Canada, this is the only fortified city. I must say I'm already really impressed by how beautiful the city actually looks. The architecture look looks this. much more similar to European architecture. Yeah. Uh, what we're used to in Europe and I guess there's like a really big French influence given that the going language here is French. I mean just look at these beautiful buildings. I heard somewhere that the history of uh, Quebec is about like dates back 400 years so 
for I think North America that's a pretty historic city actually. And it has a lot of firsts for North America. I think this was the first university oh, really? in North America and a bunch of other stuff as well. So there's lots and lots of history here. This is the Notre Dame Basilique of uh, Quebec City, but I think there's a mass going on inside. So Beautiful church actually on the inside, also on the outside. Reminds me a bit of uh, churches we see at home. And uh, yeah, there was a mass going on. We followed it a little bit for a few minutes. And I uh, just a uh, little candle for my great aunt who uh, uh, passed away yesterday. Because uh, yeah, she was she was religious. And uh, whenever I had like exams at university, she always did a candle for me to to uh, help me a little bit. So doing the same for her. Here you have the beautiful Frontenac Castle. It's actually a hotel. I think it's now the Fairmont Hotel. And it looks absolutely beautiful with all these, with this big tower and these little spires on top and then the, the small windows and all the different levels that you can see. So the part with the castle here, it is called Upper Quebec actually. Because it's way up on the hill, folks. <laughs> it's up on the hill. <laughs> now we're walking down the steps and these little streets towards, uh, I guess, Lower Quebec. It is really, really such a charming city. Canada is so, 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 so beautiful. so beautiful. It is absolutely amazing. It keeps blowing my mind. Like yeah. I know it probably sounds like a broken record at this point, but yeah, you do. it's it's just I didn't think it would be this beautiful. No, like everything has been just amazing, has blown our minds, been better than our expectations. Like every step of the way, from Cape Breton to the Bay of Fundy to Quebec City here. And like we've only made beautiful. it through such a tiny section of the country so yep. far. Loads of people have been saying that when in Canada we should try a beaver tail. And we were hungry and we didn't know what to have and then suddenly on Google Maps Naik found a spot that sells beaver tails. This is a beaver tail, a lovely sweet snack. On the pictures it actually looked like this part would be super like heavy the dough and really solid but it's actually super light and fluffy and crispy looking. They just fry it and then they put some um, some chocolate paste on there, some Nutella or something, pieces of brownie and some white chocolate as well. So you can have loads of different variations, but this is the one that Naik picked. There's a poor beaver walking around without a tail now. Mmm. 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 It's really good. Mmm. The dough is good, no? The dough is so light and fluffy. I thought it would be really heavy, but this is really good. Thank you guys, whoever recommended this, because I had never heard about this, but... Good boy. So now we've already crossed off two major cities in Canada, Toronto yes, we have. and Quebec City. There's another close by. Um, just just three hours from us that we actually were not planning on going to but it is en route to where we want to drive next. So we're going to Montreal and we were actually looking at eating some poutine here in Quebec City and was googling like what are the best spots for poutine in Canada and five out of the top 10 spots I found were in Montreal. So Montreal is said to be the home of the poutine, have the best poutine in the world. So since we're passing by there anyway, we thought, well, let's just drive there and have some. If 
you've seen the video where we went to pick up our van in Halifax when we shipped it here, you will know that we also got a mystery welcome package from Chris and Dan, two of our lovely subscribers who sent us a bunch of snacks and drinks that we were go that way. super, super happy about. God, look at this. <gasps> Ooh, a supply. What is all of this? Maple cream. They live in Halifax, but they're in Montreal right now. And they were like, well, in case you want to stop by, we can meet up. There they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. It's so nice to meet you! So nice to meet you too! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Can I hug you? Hi, yeah! Nice. Oh. Doing great! Oh, so nice to meet you guys! You too! Well, well, yeah, we were, yeah, we were watching true. for him, I said, well, Nick is kind of short, so we might, <laughs> <laughs> we might not know it. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty easy to spot. <laughs> We actually dissected the package that you gave us in one of our previous <laughs> videos. We filmed everything, like going to get it and opening it. We finished all the cookies already. We finished the maple syrup cookies. Are, like, they're almost And evil. the maple syrup was really good as well. Well, and when I told some friends of ours that we were going to meet with you guys, and I said, I want to get them some nice maple syrup. Our friend Donna said, I have some. So she said, if you could just bring me a bottle. Oh, I will. it's from her and bagels. Awesome. We haven't had any bagels since we got it. Thank you so much. Here and there. Yeah. Here. Thank you. They're not kidding when they say big. <laughs> I think we're gonna meet, need some help for this one. Sorry, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have much food today, so I can already spill it. Now, from what we just learned, the cheese should be squishy. Right, guys? It should squeaky. be squeaky. 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 It has to be squeaky, okay. Is it squeaky? It is really good, though. Is it like compared to the other cheese? The cheese is not squeaky, though. The cheese is not squeaky? Not oh. squeaky. Oh. But that's okay. Maybe we should complain. <laughs> <laughs> And good. how good is it? I, I think it's really good. Is it better than the one we had? The fries are soggier than the previous one we had, but I think it's actually. I think it's better. Yeah. yeah. I might be biased because I'm supposed to think it's better, but. <laughs> so it turns out that we were just on time because now there are loads and loads of people here. So it's called La Bonquis. It's um, open 24 7. It's open 24 7. Alrighty guys, we have made it back into our van. After a few too many beers. After a few beers, a big thank you to Chris and Dan for a wonderful evening. Big thank you for all of you for watching um, and for following along on the first part of our really big road trip of Canada. Subscribe if you wanna see the rest of it and we will see you in the next one as we make our way further up through the Pan American Trans-Canadian Highway, Trans-Canada Highway, and to Alaska. Good night.